everyone i'm back with another installment of the unboxing of the darling bead box i know it's almost the end of february but this is february's box and if in case you haven't watched my other videos i wanted to let you know it comes with this white like fact sheet and on one side and then on the other side you get a list of the items that are in the box which i'll go through in a minute but it tells you a little bit about the stones included in this shipment and their properties, which is really nice because there's really, you know, they tell you some really interesting facts and beliefs because there's some, you know, um, there's some mystical features to crystals. At least that's what people believe if you believe in that. Uh, I believe in the energy of stones. So I think it's each stone or each crystal or mineral has an energy from the earth and it helps it does help us even if it's just to calm even just by looking at them so i really love natural stones and it looks like in this shipment we're going to get rose quartz or we're going to see rose quartz and it is uh, the quartz of it is the stone of love and compassion i'm just going to kind of uh, go over this really quick you don't need to hear the whole story <laughs> unless you want to but it says the meaning of the rose quartz is love and compassion the crystal can be found in the united states australia brazil madagascar south africa india sweden and germany so that's pretty interesting you can be found it can be found in all those countries as you know if you've seen rose quartz it's a pink kind of like uh trans translucent type of and it has like a vitreous luster it's translucent pink white ish sometimes it's a pink milky white you know you can it just varies depending on the on the cut and the stone and then it says that the beads date back to 7000 bc and that's crazy i had no idea and so it says that they were found in an area once known as mesopotamia and what is today's iraq rose quartz it was known to be crafted by the Assyrians around 800 to 600 BC. That's pretty cool. And uh, it says that people see, re believed, sometimes believed in the magical powers of quartz. And then the Egyptians believed the stone could prevent aging. How about that? I'm going to have to like try that one, that theory out. That could be cool. <laughs> I have a huge crystal of, uh, of rose quartz. And then it looks like we're also going to see shungite. Shung, yeah, shungite, I guess. It's a black stone. I don't know if I've heard of this stone before. Shungite consists mainly of the element carbon. It lacks a uh, common crystal structure. And it was first discovered near the village of Shunga in Karelia, Russia. So uh, it's uh, non it says that its structure is similar to those of obsidian, obsidian, amber, and opal. So, uh, you know, you have different countries where they found this stone deposits. Russia, Austria, India, and Kazakhstan, as well as the uh, Democratic Republic of Congo. They, I, they test my reading skills here. <laughs> <laughs> for real and it has usually a lustric and opaque uh metallic appearance so apparently it has its origins in prehistoric algae clusters huh interesting and it says that it's a source of purification energy transference and spiritual protection all right, so those are the two stones we're going to see. This one is probably going to be a new one for me, or maybe I've seen it before. I just didn't know what it was called. Kind of like those songs that you've heard them, but you don't remember who sings them. Or once you find out who sings them, you're like, oh, <laughs> I think that's kind of what's going to happen here. So let's get into unboxing this box. All right, you guys, this, it comes as usual in this, uh, you know, lovely tissue paper and we got a little face here. Looks like Jackie Kennedy for some reason. Did she like rose quartz? No idea. So let's see. All right, so this is what it looks like. Here is the list, and I usually check them off to make sure I received everything. And it says Jackie. I guess the theme of this box is Jackie. And I can see that because Jackie was very elegant. And you think of when you think of her, you kind of think of pink and black. So it makes sense. Okay, so for number one, we have these six millimeter glass pearls in light pink. And we got some beautiful pearls, very elegant. Look at that. 
I love these pearls. They're so pretty. Very beautiful six millimeter pearls. For number two, we have four millimeter round clear glass beads. So just some nice little round drucks. For three, we have these beautiful matte black glass beads and they are six millimeter round. So a nice break from the sparkly or the shiny. For number four, we're bringing in the sparkle. This is a six by four millimeter faceted rondelle in a pink AB. So that now you can see the beautiful rainbow. Sorry about my dog back barking in the background. They start playing together. For number five, we've got our pink rose quartz that they were talking about. This is natural rose quartz and eight millimeter beads. This is what I was talking about. Sometimes there's some translucent properties to the quartz or, you know, uh, facets. And then you've got the pink, the light pink, but then you go here and you can see the milky, milky white pink. Then you've got these striations in here. So it's a beautiful stone that has different, different colors and variations to it. This one here is a little bit, this milky white one is a little bit weird because it's got a crack on one side. Not a, well, I guess it's a crack. I don't know if it might, if it, I don't know if it comes like that, like this, or it is part of the way the stone is made. So, got some beautiful rose quartz, which is appropriate for the month of love. These are uh, 10 pieces of 12 millimeter black faceted round glass beads. How pretty are these? I like these round faceted ones. You can even like with this black one, you can make a ring. You make a make a beautiful ring right there. So yeah, these these are really pretty. Seven. We have these teeny tiny. Look at these guys. They are two times 1.5 millimeter faceted glass bicones, half plated black. These are little itty bitty guys. Look at that. So tiny. Wow. These are so small. <laughs> so weird how they can. It's two times 1.5. <laughs> so are they like a rondelle? Yeah, they're kind of. It says bike on, but they look. They kind of have a little rondelle shape to them. So I don't know. This is number seven. <laughs> For number eight, there is 10 pieces of these 10 by eight millimeter faceted rondelles in gold AB. How pretty are they? Look at that. But you know what? They gold AB, but the crystal side, it almost looks like a smoky, almost like a grayish, a smoky black or smoky gray, I mean. But then you can see pinks in there. I don't know if it, the camera's picking it up, but then you got gold on one side. These are really pretty faceted beads. For nine, there are 30 pieces of opal white and light pink pinch beads. It's kind of like a tongue twister. How cute are these little things? They almost look like candy. Little mints. All right, so this is the, these adorable little pinch beads are number nine. All right, so for number 10, there are these smooth black stone beads and they are six millimeter. So now instead of the matte, we also have some shiny ones. So we've got some pretty beads. All these little round beads, like I said, all I can think about is those stretchy bracelets. Really pretty. I think they'll be really pretty for you know, just nowadays they're just so much in style, just wearing different, layering different types of stretchy bracelets. Okay, so those were black stone beads. So I don't know if I mentioned that this, these were the black stone that they were talking about uh, previously. So that's a natural gemstone. And then we have some really cute uh, six by four millimeter faceted oval glass beads in pink AB. So we got some more sparkle. 
These are ovals. Look at that. And they got some little bit of the facets really make them sparkle with the finish, the AB finish on them. All right, so that's 11 for 12. Now we're gonna be moving, it looks like we're gonna be moving on to all the metal components. So for 12, look at how fun these are. For 12, we have two pieces of 34 by 19 millimeter rectangle pendants with bird in golden, or gold. So aren't these pretty? that they're so cute you know what these look probably look cute as earrings too they're not that heavy so they look really cute yeah, look at these these are fun five pieces of double bead caps a golden flower with clear rhinestones these are cool they look like little crowns aren't they cool look at that they got little rhinestones in them like I said, they look like little crowns. Very, very pretty. Very unique. I like these. For 14, we have 15 pieces of 5 by 4 millimeter golden column spacer beads. Okay, I thought these were those, uh, I thought they were also like those beads that are crimps. But no, these are spacer beads in gold. For 15, we have some chain. And this is one meter of 3.4 by 2.4 millimeter iron curb chain in light gold. So it's just curb chain. But these are, again, the links allow you to add some, um, the links allow you to add some really nice dangles. Some chains don't, chains, bleh, some chains do not allow that. But, or you can cut these up in little pieces and make little really cute dangles. So yeah, the curb chain is nice. Or you can make extender. They use these a lot for extenders. So you can um, adjust the length of a necklace or a bracelet. So lots of uses for curb chain. Oh, look at how pretty this is. Number 16 is a 20 by 19.5 round cage pendant, golden with hearts. I love the way they say golden instead of gold. Oh, does it open? Oh, it's got a little brooch here, you guys. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Is that adorable or what? Oh my gosh, how cute is this? Wow, that is so adorable. I've never seen something like that. You can throw in a little lava bead in there put some essential oil like uh something that induces love or the perfume your favorite perfume very cute i love it very cute i am i love little things like that <laughs> look at that some fun uh clasps so we got four pieces of gold clasps So we've got this beautiful, I don't know where they find these huge mega toggles. I swear to you, they are the only ones that I've seen that ha that send me these huge, these huge toggle clasps. <laughs> uh, I don't, and, and I never think to buy something this large or I haven't seen any available. What's this? Oh, this is another toggle. It's got little roses in there. And then we've got a lobster clasp and look at this. This cutie, a heart lobster clasp. How cute is that? So pretty. For 18, we have 25 pieces of eight by 2.5 millimeter alloy bead caps and gold retro flowers. They're flowers? I thought they just had little, little, well, I guess. I don't see much of a flower. They just look like they have little beads on the end. But we could call them a flower. <laughs> I see more like little crowns. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Do you see flowers? I don't know. Retro flowers. So maybe that's where 
that's where the key is. They might be retro. I don't know what a retro flower is. So if anybody knows, please let me know. <laughs> so very cute. Bead caps for number 19. We got these 14 pieces of seven millimeter rhinestone spacers, gold with clear stones. So we've got more of the clear stones and we've got these fun rhinestone spacers. I have a ton of these that I've been collecting over different, different boxes. But they add such a, just that little touch of sparkle, that little bit of elegance just to when you put it in, when you beat up with them you put them in a strand. So always very, very nice to have. For 20, we've got, for 20 there is two of these little fuzzy guys. <laughs> it's a faux mink fur, mini tassels in black. How cute are these? Look at that. So adorable little fuzzies. These are so cute. Last. But not least, we got a whole bunch of goodies in this last bag in 21. It says Winter Crafts Project. Make a bracelet. This is a yoga inspired bracelet with rose quartz and golden findings. Huh. Interesting. And so they give you everything to make a bracelet. That's cool. Huh. What is this? Oh, it's like a little... Oh, and yoga inspired. So this is like a, look at that little head. And you've got some more rose quartz and you've got some gold spacers and a tree of life and a mini tree of life. And do we have a clasp? No, and we've got, oh no, we've got some jump rings. So you got everything you need. No wonder we got that lobster clasp in the clasps. Cause we got, some few jump rings and like i said oh these are not they're just these are actual this round one is a little dangle interesting huh i like that idea so we got a whole little bracelet making you get a whole little bracelet making kit which you can make or you can uh, make you know like with your child they can make the bracelet and you get to make something else with the rest of the box. I think that's a neat idea, isn't it? What do you guys think? So this is all the Darling Bead Box and I have in mind as I was unpacking everything to make a nice pair of earrings. So if you wanna see what uh, how to make the earrings that are pictured in my thumbnail, then keep on watching. All right guys, so I've been having a little bit of technical difficulties, but <laughs> but I think I finally figured it out. I dropped my laptop, sadly. <laughs> I dropped my laptop and it cracked the screen, so I've been trying to do a little bit of, uh, what do you call it, patchwork, or I don't know what to call it and i think i got it to work but i apologize if some if things might go a little awry but hopefully not all right so moving on this is the earring that i am going to be making or showing you guys how to make uh it's not my original design but i saw somebody makes somebody make this similar on facebook and i thought it was so cute so i adapted it to the beads that we have here in this kit so these are, uh, this is the little earring. So to start off with, what we're going to need is a, an eight inch piece of 18 gauge wire. If you feel that this wire is too thick for your ear, your ear lobe, then, cause they're post earrings, then definitely go with a 20 gauge. But otherwise I like it, so I like the, the thickness of the 18 gauge wire so that it stays nice and I mean it doesn't lose its shape all right so you're gonna need that and then you're gonna going to need some oh that's upside down you're gonna need some 26 gauge wire and then we're going to need the chain from our kit or bead box and the the little 
supposedly uh, flower spacers, the black stone beads from the kit, the black stone beads from the box, and the little itty bitty guys here that keep bouncing around. So I had to bring out my trusty mat, otherwise they would be all over the place. So that is why I, I'm liking the white background. I think it's easier for you guys to see the beads, but I need to have something, you know, when I'm beading, I have something with some grip so that the beads don't go all over the place. <laughs> all right, to get started. Oh, and I, I apologize for tools. I have this mandrel. And this one is, I believe, from Beadalon. It's kind of, it's kind of, it's a four mandrel kit. There's a square and an oval and all those. So I'm taking, I'm using the round one, and then uh, your normal, your regular pliers, your side cutters, a pair of chain nose pliers. Possibly, you might need if you want to straighten out your wire, your nylon jaw pliers. That's pretty much it. I mean, I don't think I used anything else. So what you're going to do is take your mandrel here like this. And you're going to make, you're going to use the last one. So in my case, because I numbered them so I could remember which one I was using. In my case, I'm going to use number one. So it's the first one, the largest one. And I'm just going to make the round circle. One side, you want to leave one side longer than the other, but just make that circle just like that. Nice round circle. All right, so now we have our circle. And then what you're going to do is take, take one side and point it up. So I'm gonna take this side here, this longer side. No, I'm sorry. I'm gonna take the shorter side over here and I'm going to grab my chain nose pliers and then turn it around so that the short side is up on top. And then I'm just going to make that bend. So grab it nice, grab it with your fingers like that, nice and tight. And then just bend your wire like that, just up like that. Okay, so now we have that. Now what we're going to do is to start putting the beads. We used uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight beads of these black beads. Before we start putting on the beads, we're gonna anchor our wire and I'm gonna be working off the roll as usual. I don't like to waste, I mean, I like to save as much wire as I can. And I'm just gonna do three little loops to anchor the wire. What we're going to do is start threading our little beads. So we're gonna grab the first one and bring it all the way down See, and this one kind of got stuck, so it doesn't have a large enough hole. So I'm gonna try the next one. There are beads that do go all the way through. Or if you use 20 gauge wire, you shouldn't have a problem. Some of them I have to kind of coax through, but they're not, they won't strip the wire. There we go. See, just like that. And we're just gonna bring it up here to where the bend is. There. And then we're just going to go around. We're gonna frame these black ones. You, you don't need to anchor it to the large wire. You're just going to frame them. Make sure that you are going around the black bead. See, so we start off by framing the first black bead and give it like two or three, just hold it with your fingers so the wire doesn't slide off. Eventually it, we will anchor it up 
we will anchor it in a little bit but you can even kind of make sure that it's nice and around see around your black bead then you go around like this we'll go around so that we're in the back the wire is framing your bead but it's now we put it behind behind this circle wire circle and I apologize for the noises my dog is chewing on a bone <laughs> and he's a heavy breather because he's a pug you watched my videos before you know about my pug <laughs> So now we're bringing in another bead and see this is what's going to anchor it to the wire. So now we're going to start wrapping again. Oops. Doesn't want, just make sure he stays. <laughs> I'm going to do about three and then I'll go off and do the rest and come back and show you the next step. So just go keep going around. And I swear I have to cut my nails. <laughs> Keep going around. And it can get a little fiddly, but if you hold it in place as you're twisting, and if you want to, with your nails, you can kind of push it back a little bit. But don't pull too hard on here, because that's when you're just wrapping, you're not you know, you're just bringing you're just bringing the wire around. You're not wrapping the bead very tightly, or the bead tightly. You know, very tight, because then that's when you, that's when the if you pull on this too hard, that's when you'll you know you'll remove that frame from here. So now see now we are. I'm gonna hold the bead in just a minute. All right, so now I have the second one, and I put the the wire. Is going through the back again and it kind of anchors this the bead and the wrap that we did or the framing now let's grab another bead so I'll do this last one and then I'll go and do it off do the rest off camera to sh to come back like I said and let you show you guys what's next so you want to you know make sure your wires nice and warm and straighten it out you can straighten it out with your fingers so again, we're just going to go around the bead. We're not pulling. We're just gently wrapping it around. Again, you can use your nail if you want to, but just as long as you're not pulling, you can gently bring it around to frame your bead. So just going to go around like that bring it to the back and then bring it back to the front by putting it through the loop and now it's back up front I don't know if that makes sense let me do it again one more you're just basically anchoring the wire to let me see if this one will fit you're anchoring the wire to the larger wire so there we go. I thought this one might not fit, but it does. So now, again, let's do this again. All together now. <laughs> Straighten your wire. Like that. And then bring it around to frame the black bead. Like that. Just hold it. And again, don't pull. You're just wrapping. You're just making a little frame that go again second one see how it tends to want to shrink if you pull on this wire all I do is just gently with my nails pull it back down because see we have what our first turn and again gently we're just gonna hold it in place with our finger and bring it a second time now we're going to go behind this wire like that 
and then through through the loop here to come back up and we're gonna have our wire back up in front so I'm gonna go do another four because it's eight eight of them and then I will be right back so I've added the other beads so we have eight and now simply what we're going to do and I'm just going to push this a little bit back like this so I have room all we're going to do is just start wrapping this you can you can if you want to make a coil separately you can do so with a coiling gizmo but I find it just easier than instead of trying to break the wire and start all over again all we're doing is just going around with our wire like that and then we squish it and see how we're just going to start to have this little wire wrapping thing here so I'm gonna I'm gonna wire wrap up until about here so we're gonna leave like one a quarter I would say a quarter of the circle bare and then once I'm done wrapping up to there, I'll come back again. All right, so I wrapped it almost all the way. So like I said, we, we have a quarter left of the circle. What we're going to do here is grab one. First of all, we're gonna grab one of these bead caps that supposedly are a retro flower. <laughs> and I ended up, I did cut the wire uh, and I left a nice, long piece i don't know i won't be able to show it but it's about two feet of wire so now what we're going to do is thread this flower and then i'm just going to bring it through one of these little beaded these one through one of these little like crown thingies <laughs> i don't know what else to call them bring it through and then we're going to grab the end of the wire and we're going to bring it through again to the center but see first I wrapped it around I'm sorry I forgot to mention first I wrapped it around the 18 gauge so it's around here and now I'm going to grab the end to bring it back through this the center of the speed cap make sure it doesn't get caught on everything like I'm doing here <laughs> And you want to make sure your wire is going is staying nice and straight otherwise it will kink and break so now we're going to give it stability by bringing it again down one through the middle the center of one of these little peaks and then I'm going to do again a few more wraps like if I were coiling so then you kind of wrap until well you don't kind of you wrap until you can see the coil starting to come out of this side and now we're going to let me just make sure I got this right yeah we're going to bring in one of these little itty bitty well they say bike cones but they look like rondelles to me these itty bitty beads here bring it all the way down through the wire like that and then here I need to cut my nails these are driving me crazy but with my laptop getting all messed up just kind of threw me off kilter <laughs> so we're going to see how I you want to pinch it to where it's in the center let me get up here you want to pinch it to where it's in the center there like that see how I'm, I'm I put it right in the middle of these two make sure it doesn't See how it come, wants to come to the side? You want to make sure that it stays in the center. And then you can just grab it and twist. Don't twist too much or you'll end up breaking you'll end up breaking the wire. But this is kind of like a little, I don't know what to call it, something like a little decoration kind of sticking out, giving it a little bit of character. And now you continue wrapping. Now I'm going to add another one another little bead and again we're just going to do kind of a U like that make sure that you're holding it in place and I'm going to hold it with my nail 
and start to twist. There we go, see? Now, you can kind of arrange these however you like. So I'm gonna go and do the other flower and one, and one more of these little beads to add to this side and I'll be right back. Okay, so now that I've done, you know, I've done this little flower and I put another little stone right there. Now I can cut this wire right here. So now what you're going to do, what we're going to do is grab this wire right here, cross it over. You, you can start off with your hand. You can help yourself because it's such a thick wire, it can get tricky as far as make it nice and tight. So we're gonna go around here three times. See, I'm just gonna squish this down. I've got two, and now I'm just gonna do one more, like that. See, and in the back, if, if this gets a little wonky, you can kind of straighten it out to make it your circle again. And then in the back, we're going to cut right there. Hold on to your wire. And then tuck this in. Make sure you're squeezing this nice and tight. This wire tucked in here so this wire doesn't slide up and down. Grab our pliers and gently push it back. What we do is just measure, grab your, and for our ear wire, it's just a little bit over, like I said, a little bit over a centimeter. So I measure it right there. So you basically, this is right about there will be good for your ear. If you feel that it hits, you know, behind your ear, like your head, then you can cut it a little more. What we're going to do is take some of this uh, chain, finish this earring off. What we're going to do is, and honestly, there's no rhyme or reason to putting on the curb chain. What I did was just kind of play by ear, put the chain wherever I liked. I even kind of caught it through one of these little peaks here so I could see how it would look and then brought it brought it back down through here see and then I'm just kind of looped it again and we're all gonna we're gonna wire this in place it's not gonna stay that way but just kind of to get an idea of where how, how much and where I want it so again I'm gonna put it through here and then like I said, I'll anchor it to one of these little pins here, whatever these little flower things are. <laughs> Looks like more of those, if it's a flower, it's those, uh, what do they call them? The man eaters? <laughs> and then bring it through here again and have a little piece hanging from the back. So something like that. I'm just going to cut right there all right so what we're gonna do is take our wire that we had left over and first as always we just start by anchoring our wire and I you don't need to do a lot of wraps just one or two, kind of hide it behind this little flower here. Like that. And then, now you can take the end and start your wrapping of the, I mean, adding your chain. So I'm just gonna put one of the little links into the wire like that. This will end up here in the back. So now I'll just grab the, the chain and then bring the wire through once again so that we can anchor it on. 
and then bring it back through we're gonna go come all the way over and through here again so that it's it ends up in the back and now we're gonna take part of the right about right about there so now that I have that I'll hold on to the link that I want to thread this through so now I have my first like draping chain a little draping it doesn't have to be exactly the length and the way you did one side because I think that's what makes them unique so what I'm gonna do is cut this center loop and this one is going to flow free it's gonna be like two strands Now we have our two cute earrings. All right, there we go. Let me just straighten these out. Can't really tell. I'll put them, you'll see a picture at the end on a little earring stand so you can see how they, how they hang. Okay, so these are the earrings that we made with our darling beadbox. What do you guys think? Do you like them? Yay or nay? Uh, and I think they turned out super cute and they, they look really cute once you put them on. So let me know if you guys will uh, recreate or make something like this. And if you did like this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up as it helps my channel and lets me know that you enjoy my tutorials as well. And if you're new to my channel and you like this kind of content, please don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get notified the next time I upload a new tutorial, an unboxing, or both like this like this video because this video was delayed a little bit you might get another video right away so you definitely want to be notified for that one and as always please make sure to stay healthy and safe and i will see you guys in the next one bye